said to play it. How do you germinate hop seeds? It's definitely in the top five most asked questions that I often hear. Well, today we're going to find out. Hi folks, my name is Max Raphael. This is our new YouTube channel, Hops World. I'm glad you could join us because today we're going to find out how to germinate hop seeds. Tip number 30 from Hops World. Let's do it. Hey friends, glad you could be with us today. We're going to show you how to germinate hop seeds. But before we get started, we're going to talk about hop seeds. What about hop seeds? Why are there hop seeds? What's their purpose? Well, we'll get started talking a little bit about the anatomy of a hops plant. Hops plants actually have a male and a female plant, believe it or not. The plants that are used to make beer are the female plants. The small cones that grow on a female plant, that they look like pine cones, but they stay green. They're usually one to two inches long. They are the part of the female plant that is used to make hops. The male plant has little small white flowers, no more than a quarter inch. Uh, in size and they only give pollen. Now the hops cone if introduced to pollen from a hops plant will have seeds inside it. You do not want seeds generally to make beer. So all the hops plantations in the world are generally all female plants. I believe there's some counties in certain states in the United States where male plants are actually illegal to have because if one male plant nearby a hops farm could pollinate all the female plants. So what's the purpose of seeds? Why would you want to have cones with seeds inside them? Well, what you want is to create new varieties of hops or new cultivars, you want to use seeds because every seed is actually a different variety of hops. Every variety, whether it's Cascade or Chinook or Pearl or Hallertau, they were all created from one single seed. Every Cascade plant in the world was created from clones, either cuttings of the roots or cuttings of the one plant that was the original plant made from a seed. Every seed is just like a little baby. They're, everyone is a little bit different. Their DNA is slightly different. So by making certain crosses, using a male plant with a female plant, every seed is a new variety. So we germinate seeds and grow plants from seeds in order to create new varieties that are better adapted to the environment, better adapted to diseases or bugs that are resistant to these things or def they have unique flavors and aromas, and also to have a big yield, of course. So the process of creating new varieties is a long process, and we will make other videos about that. But for now, let's get into how we actually germinate seeds. So the germination process of seeds is not as simple as just taking seed and throwing it in the ground in some dirt and throwing water on it or sticking it between a paper towel like you learned in fourth grade to uh, plant a tomato seed. What we need to do is actually vernalize the seeds. So what is vernalize? Vernalization, as it's called, is the process where a seed gets a cold and damp spell for a certain period of time which helps the seed get ready to actually germinate. So hop seeds and other seeds in nature fall at the end of the season, which is right before winter, when the plants dry out. So naturally they fall to the ground 
and they sit through the winter with snow on top of them and they get their way into the dirt and they get damp and they get very cold and in the spring they germinate so we trying to germinate hop seeds have to trick the seeds into thinking that it's a damp cold winter so how we do that is we do a little process where we first clean the seeds and then we put them in the refrigerator in a damp paper towel and a little container for two months for them to think that they're overgoing a winter but the important thing when we do this is to eliminate fungus. The problem is when we keep these seeds wet for two months, it's easy for them to get fungus and get ruined. So the process to germinate the seeds, the most important part is the cleaning. So it's real important to keep everything very, very clean. So here's what we do. Start with Clorox wipes. They're hard to get these days, but if you can find them, they don't have to be Clorox, but any kind of wipes. We wipe down our table, we wipe down everything with Clorox wipes. Then we cover our, our table, this is how we do it. You don't have to go so crazy as we do, but we use white uh, medical paper the doctor's office uses, and we cover the table with that for a fresh start. Then the next thing we do is we use, typically, I'll use a mask, when it comes time to pull the seeds out and actually work with the seeds, it doesn't hurt to put a mask on, to not breathe on the seeds. Definitely if you cough or if you sneeze, you wanna turn away, cover, but a mask is not a bad idea. So next thing I'm actually going to do now is put on my gloves. These are not mandatory, but they're definitely helpful. But if you wash your hands really well and then wash them with alcohol, you can probably get away without using gloves. So what we do is we make a mixture that we clean the seeds with. So the stuff that we're going to need to do this project, I'll go over everything we need first. First, we get this online. It's ethyl alcohol it's 95 percent alcohol we if we can't get this i have done this with 70 percent alcohol it works just as well in the cases i've tried but uh i try to get 95 percent it's a little bit better a little bit stronger your basic bleach the next thing that we use in the mix and we don't get any bleach that's flavored or has an aroma, lime or lemon or something funky. I try to get the basic dollar store, well, it's more than a dollar, but the bleach that's the uh, most basic brand that has no flavoring or aromas. And the last thing that we need is water. Now I use distilled water, which we can get at the local pharmacy here. Sometimes it's hard to get distilled water you can use spring water, uh, possibly even tap water. I would definitely boil it for 10 minutes, for sure, first, and then let it cool down the room temperature. You definitely want it at about 70 degrees. So these are the three ingredients that we use to make our cleaning mix. Beyond that, we have already mixed here in the container our mix, which we'll show you how to do. So you need a container where you're gonna put your final mix. You're going to need two containers, one for cleaning, one for rinsing. This is really important. It's a little metal screen net, strainer, because with the seeds, when you go to strain, they stay in the little strainer. We have these little plastic tweezers. You could probably use metal ones if you open them a little, but uh, the plastic ones work a little bit better just in case we need to grab a seed. A timer, regular kitchen timer. You can use your cell phone. We have these little eyedropper, any type of little 
eyedropper that can squeeze some water out when we only need to get a little bit of water. We use this. Now beyond that, we obviously have our containers that we're going to leave our seeds in while they are in the refrigerator vernalizing. So these are little containers that I buy at the dollar store. They're actually three for a dollar these. They work perfect for a napkin that we can fold. It, this we use for when we have a lot of seeds, 50 to 100 seeds. We have smaller containers too. Last year I had square ones, which worked a little better, but these round ones are fine. These are five for a dollar at the dollar store. I don't know if they're super airtight. They seem pretty good. I usually try to test them and unwrap the corner of the package at the dollar store, but it doesn't matter because we will check these daily in the beginning at least and then every few days and make sure that they're moist inside. And if we have to add a little water, we just add a little bit of water. So our seeds, obviously, in this case, we're going to germinate cluster, female cluster with uh, USDA male number 19058. These are two varieties that I legalized in Brazil. You're going to need a name tag, which I made already. And it has the cross, which is cluster versus 19058 male. The date that we actually picked the seeds, which was 9 15, 2020. And today's date, which is the first day that we're going to start the vernalization process. The most important thing is today's date, but you usually want to know what kind of crosses that you're making. So you can definitely know in the future whether any of these go forward into the next, uh, generation whether they I use them for crosses or actually you never know the next super uh, Brazilian hops might come out of one of these seeds something important I'll talk about is the paper towels or napkins that you use if you use paper towels on a roll you should separate them first and you don't need sterilized paper towels I bought sterilized paper towels online. They're really readily available, but, uh, and they're real cheap and I was buying some other stuff. So they come double sealed, already sterilized. If you can't get sterilized paper towels, one way you can sterilize the paper towels is to get a pressure cooker and actually cook the paper towels. What I do is I get tin foil and I get the paper towels, I wrap them loosely along the bottom, then I put a piece along the top and leave it open, but cover everywhere, and but let where the moisture and the steam can actually get inside easily. And then you pressure cook them for 10 minutes and they come out totally sterilized. And then you keep them and put them in a paper a plastic bag inside with the tin foil, just like this, and you pull them out one at a time. Now our container, I already wiped down with 95% alcohol. I've wiped everything down with 95% alcohol after I wiped with Clorox. It's real important. So the mix, I'm going to write down at the end of every one of our little videos, we're going to have a list of everything that you're going to need. And if there's like in this case, I'll actually have the actual mix that we use to clean the seeds. So the mix simply is distilled water, 10 parts. So for you that only have a little seeds, a few seeds, what I would suggest is 100 milliliters of distilled water, 10 parts distilled water, four parts bleach, 40 milliliters. Two parts alcohol, 20 milliliters. So you can cut that down to 50 milliliters of water, 20 milliliters of bleach, and 10 milliliters of alcohol, or even less. But you probably want that much to do your seeds because you need a little bit to rinse them with.
make sure this is mixed well. One thing that I would recommend if you have a lot of seeds, which I have a lot and unfortunately mine broke, is I have a little electric mixer that has a little thing that you put inside the container and it spins. But what happened was I turned it on yesterday and I put one of these containers on it and the heater was on and it melted the container. So we're not gonna use that. Simply, we're going to take our cleaning mix and we're going to mix for five minutes. So set our timer and See you in five minutes. Okay, so our five minutes is up. We switched angles here a little so you can see a little bit better what we're doing. So now what we do is we never reuse this liquid for other seeds. One thing I forgot to mention, something really important that you need is a bucket. So we keep a bucket over here on the side and we take the seeds with our strainer and we dump them. So now what I do is I take our distilled water. I give the seeds a little rinse. And then I take the seeds, put them in the distilled water, and one minute, a nice rinse. Okay, one minute is up, and we do the same thing. We dump all the water through the strainer. Okay. One minute has arrived. So, once again, dump out the water. So, there we go. And we'll show you how we prepare our little container to put our seeds in. We get our paper towel. Now, if the paper towels don't fit like these, it'd be good to pre-cut. You want a paper towel that fits nicely inside your container and you, that you can actually fold in half and double. So we put the paper towel in. Now is why we have the eyedropper. I get distilled water. And I like to wet every single corner and every single edge. And let that soak in real good. You really want the paper towel wet and not just damp. I like to make it wet to really have some good humidity to get these seeds nice and moist and soften up. So, once you have the paper towel totally wet like this, we take our seeds, we try to tap them out a little bit spread out if possible, but they always clump up. There we go. Now, something really important. There's one seed here on the side that's not touching the paper towel. You can't have that. And all these seeds clumped up is going to really cause fungus. So we want to separate these seeds. Every single seed if possible. So none are touching one another. This is really important because anywhere where there's two or three seeds touching, you can almost guarantee you're gonna have fungus, which is going to ruin the seeds. Fungus at this point is our enemy. A well, fungus is always our enemy with hops. 
So, looks pretty good. All the seeds are nice and spread out. Not one touch in the other. So what we want to do is fold down the paper towel and get our eyedropper. And again, wet thoroughly. Start in the corners and make sure they get soaked. We really want these seeds to get wet on both sides right now. So they start absorbing a little bit of this moisture. Just a dab more. And there we go. So we put the lid on. We always make sure that seeds are labeled. And then we'll show you what we do with these next. Okay, so next step, put them in the fridge. We already have a few. Add one more. It's real important. Stay between 34 and 40 degrees. These things need to be cold, but you cannot let them freeze. In the refrigerator, not the freezer. Today is January 1st. We'll see you on March 1st. Okay, so that's how we germinate the seeds and we put them in for fertilization. While they're in the refrigerator, it's real important to check them every day for about a week to make sure you're not losing humidity. The whole two months, you need to check them two or three times or one or two at least once a week to make sure that you don't lose humidity. Sometimes it takes a month or six weeks and they start drying out. If they do, just add a few drops of distilled water. No big deal. But they have to stay moist, have to stay wet. You don't wanna create a little pond in the container. Okay, they need air also. So that's really important. Now, after two months, we're gonna do a little video, another tip on what you do. But for now, I'll explain real quickly that you take them out of the refrigerator. What we do is we place them under a light with a timer for eight hours a day at 75 degrees. It's important to be nice and warm in the room or nearby. We use a little radiator heater and a little thermometer. And we have a timer with an LED light. You can use a little T5 LED. They sell online for about 10 bucks. Uh, depending on how many plants you have, or a fluorescent, a double shop light fluorescent, uh, or even any kind of a little grow light, uh, it'll work. Uh, probably sunlight, but you really want eight hours a day. And if you do that within five to 10 days, you're gonna have your own new varieties of hops, babies. So there it is, folks. A little bit complicated, but it's well worth it. In the end, to see a brand new plant grow from a seed and think that that could be the next new latest and greatest variety, and better yet, you get to name it. You can name it the name of your child or your wife or your husband or your dog or your town or a fantasy name. That's part of the fun too. I can't wait to have our own varieties so we can name them. So if you enjoyed our little lesson today and our tip on how to germinate seeds, please put a thumbs up. If you have any comments or any questions or suggestions for further tips, 
please write in the comments below. Please subscribe to our channel here. Help us out and share this with your friends. Thanks for being here with us. We enjoyed it as much as you. Cheers to life.